All right, uh, class, this is your assignment for uh, basically for tomorrow and for the weekend. Um, this is Mr. Clancy. I thought we did a lot of very fine work in class this week. I am extremely proud of you guys. And uh, so what we're going to do for our assignment is the Chapter 5 notes. These do follow pretty closely with your book also. All right, or you can use the video. All right, and we're going to go from uh, the four, we're going to do the first four pages of this handout. All right, so if you're okay with that, this is going to encompass some of the things we've been talking about with respect to metric, uh, how how scientists measure things, and how they actually report their findings. You can see some of the terms we're going to be looking at here, learning about scientific notation units are very very important. I put a little asterisk around that. Liters is the basic unit for volume. Grams is the basic unit for mass. A conversion factor we talked about being used in uh, dimensional analysis. The Fahrenheit scale is typically with a um, the, the temperature scale that we use here in the United States. Density is mass over volume. And you might remember our little DMV. Always something nice to remember. We'll learn about the metric system. I'm going to teach you something about SI units, which is System International Units. And I'll explain what those are later on in this, in this uh, particular handout. MLs is typically how volume is expressed. Mass is the basic. Um, uh, ba uh, mass will be uh, quantified, if you will, in grams. An equivalent statement, I'll teach you about that, that really ties in with uh, conversion factors over here. Uh, Celsius scale is the scale for water. This would go from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, specific gravity is like a comparative statistic. I'll show you about that later on. The English system is what we use here. Volume, how much space something takes up. Kilogram, a thousand grams. Sig figs, dimensional analysis, and also the Kelvin scale which is typically used a lot for gases. We're going to use that a little bit later on more when we talk about gas behavior. All right, a measurement always consists of two parts. One, the first is a number, and the second is a unit. So always get in that habit, the number and the unit. All right, it also tells us something about the precision. of an instrument, all right? And we also have quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative is numbers related. All right, uh, this is also very objective. All right, qualitative is basically, if you will, non-numbers, I'll call it. All right, and an effect, it is um, subjective. So as an example, a qualitative observation, I could say she is from a large family. And that's subjective because your definition of a large family and my definition of a large family could be markedly different. Um, over here, a quantification of that could be she is one of ten children. All right, that's a big family. That also says how big it is. Okay, there's no difference with ten kids. So that really kind of, again, numbers related. Uh, maybe I could say something like she has long hair over here. I could also say she has hair that's six inches below her shoulders or something like that. So those are quantitative and qualitative usually used in observations. Both of these are important in science. All right. All right, sign notation for very large or very small numbers. I think you guys had a very, very fine um, idea on this. Uh, 786 
Uh, all that big number expressed in scientific notation would be 7.86 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 10, 10 the big number. This could be set, this other one here could be 7.86 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the negative fifth power. Remember, a negative number indicates a very small, Hi. negative number is, is usually a small number, not necessarily a negative number. One uncertain number. Um, all, all the certain figures in one uncertain number. All right. And psi notation basically expresses the following. I'm going to say m times 10 to the nth, where 1 is less than or equal to m is less than 10. All right, that makes sense. And n is positive for big numbers. And n is negative for small numbers. All right. So a decimal place to the left, all right, it is a positive power of 10. Therefore, 15,000 becomes 1 1.5 times 10, one, two, so times 10 to the fourth. All right. If I move a decimal place to the right, it is a negative power of 10. Therefore, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 1.5 times 10 to the minus fourth. Again, if you have a negative exponent, negative exponent equals a number between 0 and 1. All right, zero and one. All right, that's page one. You guys are doing quite well. All right, let's look at um, one point six times ten to the minus two. Where does this fall on the number line? Well, this would be point one point. This would be six. This would be point zero one six. So it's going to be someplace in here. About okay. Is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 2 bigger or smaller than 1.6 to the minus 4? Well, 1.6 to the minus 4 would be here. I'm going to put 1e e, uh, minus 4. 1e e minus 3. Remember, e is exponent. This is the same thing as 1 times 10 minus 3. All right, this would be 1e. E, minus 2, 1e e minus 1, 1e one e to the 0, which is anything to the 0 power is 0. All right? So this is going to be a bigger number right here. This is going to be 1e e minus 5 over here on the left. All right? Your turn. You to do is shut the, shut the video off now and try these and see how well you do, then compare answers after that. I'm going to go ahead and throw some answers on here. Four. Two point four seven eight two. This would be three point five. Six. This would be three point oh six e minus two. This would be five point seven six e minus three. All right. So check it. All right. The units of measurement are from for science. Let's move down here. Called SI units from the French system international.
It's like an international group of scientists basically get together and put together some standards for everybody, all right, they can use for communication. Let's go ahead and look at this here. Length, when measuring length, the S, these are SI units. This would be meter. M, little m. Time is actually seconds. Little s. Volume is liters. Or L. Mass is grams. Or G. Temperature is kelvins. Where I said earlier, that's the one that's used for gases, but it is a SI unit, K. And pressure is a unit called Pascals, or just big P, little a. We'll get used to this later. An important equivalent statement in volume is that 1 ml equals 1 cubic centimeter, and for water, 1 gram per ml equals 1 gram per cubic centimeter equals one kilogram per liter. And this doesn't this works for water, not for oil, because of different densities. So one's a good number to remember for water in terms of density. Alright, number three. These are the, uh, in order to show large and small quantities of each type, the metric system uses these prefixes. Notice I have highlighted the ones that I think are most important for you. X, this is centi is 1,000 times the basic unit. Uh, or excuse me, kilo is 1,000 times the basic unit. Centi is 1 100th of the basic unit and milli is 1,000, the basic unit, all right? You've got to memorize these three, okay? That's the most commonly used. There are some examples for that, so make sure you go over that. Uh, let's look at some practical applications of this. The uh, SI unit for length is the meter. And for each one of these, I would say, um, I would try, okay, centimeter. How many centimeters are one meter? That would be 100. What's the equivalent statement between one inch and centimeter? So I'm going to say one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. All right. How many meters are in a kilometer? 1,000. What's the equivalent statement between one mile and uh, kilometers? All right. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. you, want your, you want your uh, test? Um, I still have to answer a few questions on the, for the thing. All right. But then, then can I get that back? Yes. Okay. Yep. Go ahead and finish so, that. I'll leave it out for you. I just want to let you know that I am. Thank you. Come back. I'm going to be leaving in about 10 minutes, so make okay. sure you come back. All right. Uh, an equivalent staying between mile and kilometers, I'm going to say 10K equals 6.2 miles. All right, so if I divide that through, so 1K equals 0.62 miles. All right, these are um, equivalence statements. And we'll see later on where these are used with uh, converting, okay, into conversion factors for unit analysis, which is real important. All right, let's look at a couple of others here. The SI unit for volume is the liter. All right, and this is the three-dimensional space occupied by an object or substance. How many mLs in one liter? That would be a thousand. How many liters in one gallon? That would be 3.78. Cost of gas in liters, I'll let you figure that out. I uh, go about 2.37 per gallon. Okay, so see if you can figure that out. We'll go over that Monday. How oh boy? Uh, I don't know. 12 ounces. Why don't you figure that one out? How many ounces? Let's see. 16 ounce or uh, 128 ounces equals three 
mLs. All right, so there's your equivalent statement, and one can of pop would be 12 ounces. So I'll let you work on that on your own. A graduated cylinder is used to measure liquids usually marked off in mLs. All right, we can use the equivalent statement, one mL equals one cubic centimeter. All right, this is cubic, by the way, if I wrote it out in words. Centimeter. All right, SI unit for mass is the gram. All right, one kilogram is 1,000 grams. All right, one more page, and then you're good to go. All right. All right, uncertainty in measurement. This relates to directly what we're talking about today. The number of numbers that tells us something about the precision of measuring anything, really. Okay, it could be length, could be volume, it could be temperature, and so forth, all right? So, if I look at these two rulers here, um, the first line in inches, if I looked at the first line in inches, this would be, here's inches, so I would say this is 1.5 inches, correct? 1.5 inches. The second line in centimeters would be equal to 2.5. Now notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each one of these is tenths, so I can actually record this as 2, 5, 4. Remember, I can go one extra decimal place as I do that. Um, and if I measure the pin to the left, all right, I'm going to, you can see I've got a blow up here of this particular one. Uh, let's see, the nail, it's so the pin, okay? The diagram and the ruler blown up as imagined as we attempt to estimate the final digit of measurement, all right? So this is, let's see, this would be 2. Point, all right, I would say this is right on the money. That would be 2.5. Five, five centimeters. All right, because that's the fifth. That's the fifth and hundreds, which is estimated. Okay, the rule is I can go, I can use I can use one uncertain digit. for each measurement. Hang on, Ken. 